Bishop Dr. Lois Jones Delaval. Give a warm hand for the two of them. Bishop Dr. Lois Jones Delaval. That is a mouthful, <laughs> but you have a legacy that very much so upholds that big name. So it is an honor to be sitting with the icon. Um, a little bit of kind of where I come from is I'm connected to her grandson, Patrick Delaval Jr. And I'll soon to be his wife at some point. But <laughs> what I will say is that it is an honor to be here and sit with you and do this documentary with you. And as a doctor myself, and one day having the same last name, I tell her all the time, I have no idea <laughs> how I'm going to try to uphold her legacy, but it certainly will be an honor to try. Amen. All right, so we'll jump into the questions here. I'll start with the first question of, if you could tell the story of your history, what would you say? That's very interesting. <laughs> I, I would say, I would, I believe in overcoming, overcoming a principle is very, very important. Uh, we can come into many different situations, many things can happen, but when we have love of God within us and believe the word of God, we know that we can overcome any and everything. And uh, I, I, I'm just so grateful because in my life, I can go back many years uh, having a great husband, two beautiful kids. I remember the beautiful days we would uh, go fishing, we would come home from work. I was a real estate broker and uh, we were very much involved in many different activities. He was president of the Minority Builders. He was uh, over quite a few organizations, and so was I. And um, we, I, in fact, I helped to organize the Broward County Women Political Caucus. I was very, very involved. And by being involved as I was, I was happy, and he was happy, and we were doing great things. Yes. And uh, I, just thank God because uh, by being involved and doing a lot of things, and I'll take you back to one uh, one thing, and that was one day I was we were driving home, and I looked at our community, and I saw uh, junk cars, just a lot of trash all over the neighborhood. And I said to my husband, uh, Sam, I, I really hate to come in our community because during those years, it was complete segregation mm -hmm. and trash was not picked up in the black neighborhoods uh, in Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. uh, it, trash was picked up in the white neighborhoods. Uh, so we, I said, I want to start a women organization. Mm -hmm. And I, he said, well, good, why don't you? And I did, I called up about 50 black women. And as I called them up, they said they would be there. And I, we had nearly 50 women to come to the meeting and I only called about 50. So back in that day, women were, you know, they really, they weren't into drugs, they weren't into, they, they really wanted to do the right thing, mm -hmm. these women. Mm -hmm. And they all came and we started the Action Women Club. We started the cleanup drive in, in the black community. We 
came and we got involved with our city elected officials, our county elected officials, and uh, we had a big day. James Brown, the singer, was there. And, okay. I mean, it was just a beautiful day. We gave away hundreds of trash cans and and uh, we gave away paint for people to paint their homes. Okay. And it was just a beautiful day. But I say this, uh, by us coming together, it made a change in our community mm -hmm. that uh, we began to have pickup service in our community. So I'm really thankful that I uh, really believed in overcoming. Mm -hmm. Let us overcome every situation. Let us speak out. Let us, uh, whatever we see is not right, mm -hmm. let us work towards a goal of making it uh, a success of whatever we need to do. Absolutely. And uh, so. Absolutely. Yeah, so I hear so much about overcoming, but a huge part of overcoming that you mentioned is the action piece. Yes. That it's action oriented. So you all were able to notice a problem and a need that needed to be fulfilled that wasn't being fulfilled by the city or the government. And by coming together, you all were able to meet that need and then then some, and then bring about a sense of unity of these women with yourself. Yes, even here in this building, I remember I was president of the Reverend Sam Delavo Park. Okay. And uh, the county came, one of the persons who was in charge came to us and said that uh, Mr. Morris wanted to put an African-American library here. And it was very interesting because I was so happy. <laughs> and uh, we high. had to vote as whether we wanted to come on our land here. Yeah. And so I, I uh, immediately said to the group, let us vote for it. Yeah. I mean, this is beautiful. Yeah. This is the third uh, African-American library in the United States. Right. Let's give it a hand. Yeah. 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 It's such a beautiful building. It really is. And so much is here. So much history is here. And uh, so, you know, I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I was telling you about the Action Women's Club, yeah. and uh, I, I, I'm so thankful because my husband, he was a part of SCOPE, mm -hmm. and that was a group of uh, about uh, a dozen uh, progressive okay. whites and some blacks, mm -hmm. uh, like Reverend Weaver from Mount Olive Baptist Church, and uh, Reverend White, I think he was from one of the Methodist churches, but they all came together uh, to make the community better. Mm -hmm. And my husband was a community leader. He was president of the Minority Builders. He was president of Black History uh, Association. So uh, he was always doing great things for the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as a team, the two of us, we were just really involved and we enjoyed it. Yeah. And you see those two boys that were standing here, my two sons, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were young and I used to just love, I used to, uh, you know, as we go out and barbecue in our backyard in the pool and we'll swim and, you know, we would take a lot of vacations, but we worked hard. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we were able to do the things we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but one day, something happened. Uh, I was shocked, and my husband was taken away, and he died in my arms that day. And it's so much uh, people around the country going through uh, many uh, heartaches uh, because they have lost their mother, father, sister, brother you know, family members, you know, and all of this happens when people are not 
expecting it because sure. they're moving forward with their lives. They have love in their hearts, not and hear someone mm -hmm. who is depressed to have a problem. Uh, you know, just as the man went in and shot up all those children, children yeah. you just wouldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. But these are the kinds of things that happen. And on that day, my husband died in my arms. But I just want to tell you something that was beautiful, how great God is. Mm -hmm. As they were taking me to the hospital, because this arm was completely deformed. Mm -hmm. And as I was in the ambulance, I, I could feel the power of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. I mean, the spirit of the Lord came upon me. Mm -hmm. And I was able to be able to, for so many people, hundreds of people came to the hospital even to see me because I was shot. Mm -hmm. And I was able to help them to go through. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I just thank God for it because in whenever, we are going through any trials or tribulations. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. He will be able to supply our needs. Yeah. He'll yes. be able to help us through depression and whatever we're going through. Yeah. He will help us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm just so grateful that I knew him mm -hmm. that carried me and helped me. And because I had two young boys to rear. And uh, whereas I'm used to a husband mm -hmm. being there for me, having uh, whatever I need, I could always call on him. And then I found myself in a situation that I had two young boys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I had to do everything. Mm -hmm. How old were they and how old were you at that time? Uh, I was 38. Wow. My two sons, wow. I believe, my oldest one, my youngest one, I believe, was five. Six. And my youngest, oldest one uh, was... Six and ten. Six and ten. Six and ten. Wow. I had a phone. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, to see. Okay, wow. I thought it was five. All right. <laughs> Thank God for fun. But they were young. Wow. Yeah. They were young. Yes. And, um, <laughs> but I, I was so... Uh, thankful to Almighty God because I'm a person that I like to uh, become involved and get things done. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, in the time my husband was alive, I ran uh, presidential campaigns and governor campaigns. So in fact, I ran Bob Graham campaign, who ran for governor. Yes. Right. And uh, I'm, I'm so, uh, delighted to say that the state of Florida, uh, the governor, Bob Graham, gave a proclamation for the state of Florida that on November 11th is the Rebel Sam Delaho Day okay. for the entire state of Florida because of so much he did uh, for the people. And I just thank God for it. Yeah, but, um, I'm, I'm just so excited today to be able to talk with you and talk to you. Yes, yes. You have a absolutely significant um, legacy, but I want to go back for just a second and highlight something that you said, because you said the power of God was with you mm -hmm. as you had just been shot. Mm -hmm. Your husband mm -hmm. had just died in your arms. Mm -hmm. And the fear was the overwhelming tone that was with you. It wasn't the natural fear. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the natural mm -hmm. sadness and grieving. But the spirit, the power of God was with you in that moment. I think that's just so beautiful to highlight. I think that's so important to highlight, again, that resilience, that overcoming that you talked about in the beginning. Yes. yes. In fact, I'm writing. I will be here through with the book very soon, okay. Overcoming, mm. uh, and I, this book will be a blessing to people all over the world, Absolutely. to help them to overcome, mm -hmm. and uh, I will be coming out with that book, and mm -hmm. have a prayer book that uh, will be coming out in a few days. Okay, so mm -hmm. you all heard it here first.
church. <laughs> Look forward to Archbishop Dr. Lois Jones Delvo. She has two books coming out. It's like I have three. Pressing three. Towards the <laughs> there it is. Pressing towards the mark. And we must. We must press towards the mark. Yeah. As we as a people, we have come a long way. Yes. When we think of our uh, ancestors yes. coming across the water, mm -hmm. not on their own, but as slaves, mm -hmm. and coming into a country that they were made slaves and and had to rear their children, had to survive the best way they knew how, mm -hmm. and and it. And we have been discriminated against mm -hmm. so many years, but through it all, we have not. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. And if we hold on to God's unchanging mm -hmm. hand, mm -hmm. we can overcome, and our children mm -hmm. will have a better life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I'll move on to our, our next question. Um, I will say, tell me a little bit more about the ministry that you and your husband founded. Yes. <laughs> uh, we founded the ministry and uh, my husband was a great teacher. Uh, I was more or less a uh, preacher, uh, but my husband was a teacher. He really would get into the word, and uh, so many other ministers used to like to talk to him because, uh, as he would talk with them, he would be able to bring out so much that the word was saying, and they would call him, and and he would. Uh, the Lord would give him things, you know, like if somebody, uh, for instance, uh, one young man, uh, my husband got up one day, he said, I have to go and see a friend of mine. And he called his name, and he said, the Lord told me if he wouldn't come out of the, the way he was living, the sins and all of that, mm -hmm. he said, if he didn't come out, he was going to die mm -hmm. soon mm -hmm. and not to be going to the nightclubs anymore. Mm -hmm. And the young man said to him, you know, the Lord has been dealing with me about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe what you just said. Mm -hmm. And that's when he came back and he told me. Mm -hmm. It was about a week later. Mm -hmm. He was in a nightclub mm -hmm. and he got shot. Mm -hmm. You know, many times a lot of people who things happen to, they're warned. Mm -hmm. And we must take on the warning that mm -hmm. comes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because when we do, uh, and we listen to that soft voice mm -hmm. of God, He will direct our path. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's why we as a people have come so far and so good mm -hmm. as men because we have listened to the voice of God, so mm -hmm. many of us. Mm -hmm. We love God mm -hmm. and um, Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So your husband, he heard the voice of God to go and kind of be a vessel of warning him about what was coming in, to, to, in the future for him if he did not take heed to God's voice. Right. And so that was an aspect of his ministry. Tell me a little bit more about your husband's ministry and your ministry and how you all kind of synergize together to make it even greater. Actually, what happened uh, after, uh, it wasn't that long after we had started the ministry mm -hmm. that he died. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you something that was always very interesting to me. But when it comes to God, all things are possible. I remember uh, he said to me, he said, I'm going to leave. I'm, I'm going to leave you. Mm -hmm. He knew it. Mm -hmm. And I think 
people of God know when the Lord, he said, I have done the work that the Lord mm. has called me to do. Mm. I said, no, we have a ministry that uh, we are both going to live to be over 100. Mm. And we have a great ministry. Mm. And he laughed and he looked at me and he said, you have this ministry. Mm. You are going to take the ministry on. And I said, no, we. Mm. He said, no. You mm. and uh, when things happen, I I could understand that God is with me, yes. and uh, there are certain things that I must do, and like with the Lord empowering me to uh, empower His people uh, that <laughs> they can come in and they can be blessed. Uh, it, it helped me to understand mm -hmm. what had happened is I am very thankful because I prayed mm -hmm. and I asked God, I said, where should I take the ministry? Mm -hmm. And he gave me the address, if you know where the Performing Arts uh, is okay. on Broward Boulevard behind Burger King. He told me to go there mm -hmm. and I went there. And, you know, during that time, some property, you know, wasn't really sold to black people in the sort of downtown. Mm -hmm. But it was very interesting because uh, being a real estate broker and it was another person had the listing and the gentleman who owned it was in, uh, in Canada. Okay. And so I asked, uh, him, I wanted to put a contract, and he said, oh no, you, you can't get this property. Mm -hmm. And so I went back and I got on my knees and I prayed mm -hmm. and I said, Lord, you told me to go there mm -hmm. and purchase that property. Mm -hmm. And I'm told that I can't buy it. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, just go back and talk to him again. Mm -hmm. And I did. He said, what do you want with it? And I said, told him what I wanted with it. And he sort of said, well, okay. And, mm. and I purchased the property. Mm -hmm. And we started the church. Mm -hmm. And I was so, I, I really enjoyed it because uh, the Lord would bless me with the healing and deliverance ministry. Oh mm -hmm. And uh, I, my sons, they learn how to play music and they can sing and, and uh, it was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And one day while I was uh, mm -hmm. in my real estate office, someone came, well, actually this particular day, uh, I happened to look out of the window mm -hmm. and I saw people, a man eating out of the trash can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, eating out of the trash can. And I, I wasn't familiar with people eating out of the trash can. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I noticed another day I came and it was a couple from New York mm -hmm. and they were sitting in front of the door when I went to go in my office. And I said, where are you all from? New York. And they said that New York had given them a ticket to, to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Mm -hmm. I said, really? And the lady had frozen uh, foot, uh, and her feet were swollen. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, I guess from the ice, they had been walking mm -hmm. and all that snow. Mm -hmm. And so they sent them to Florida. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, according to them, the state paid for it for them mm -hmm. to come from there to here. Mm -hmm. And they had nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. And they were just sitting out there. So I took them in. Mm -hmm. And that's what started a homeless shelter. Wow. I started Amen. the homeless shelter, at, which I had about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I helped many people, thousands and thousands of people. And um, I had the opportunity to mentor to these people. I would, you know, help them. And, uh, and as I was at Nova University, Praise God, I wrote the first book on the homeless 
of I believe it's the first because I couldn't find one. I was trying to find one. Mm -hmm. And on the homeless in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I did the first study in this area that the uh, administrators was able to use the book to um, you know, get grants for the homeless. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So wow. it was rewarding. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, you started the ministry with your husband and then he kind of gave you that premonition that this would be yours to carry beyond a hundred years old. And you <laughs> you took that and you um, made good on that prophecy. Um, and that's that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Absolutely. I just want to highlight your dedication that I know a little bit about that I find incredibly impressive. Monday through Sunday, as your grandson would say, you are on that prayer line. You are praying. You are praising. You are worshiping God. 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. You don't miss in <laughs> That level of consistency and dedication is certainly something to be highlighted. Yes. Thanks to Almighty yes. God. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. You know, we must love each other. Mm -hmm. We must forgive each other. That is yeah. so important. Even yeah. in many homes, many families mm -hmm. are angry with each other. They don't know how to forgive. Yeah. But if we learn how to say nice things to each other, yeah. forgive each other, I yeah. think it'd be a better world for everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. All right. We have one more question here before we conclude this beautiful interview. I will say we are here at the African American Research Library and Cultural Center. Why did you choose this location to film your documentary? Mm. Yes. Very, very important. I go back a little bit to uh, it's right on in the park mm -hmm. uh, the Reverend Sam Delaval Park mm -hmm. and I had something to do with it being here yes. and I'm so grateful uh, for that mm -hmm. uh, because uh, great people are here at this library. They are very nice to people if they come in. They want yes. to show them um, all of the information and uh, uh, past uh, important um, uh, whatever has happened in the community. And if you notice around Delaval Park also, their names are pioneers. Yes. And, and they have a lot of pioneers here. Mm -hmm. Also books and all of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, right in here it's just uh, people all over Broward County and even Dade and Palm Beach. A lot of them come in, you know, just to see uh, what is here in this area. Absolutely. And so I'm just uh, so happy to be here in this spot because look, it's beautiful. It <laughs> is. And they always have uh, different exhibits of uh, different uh, whether it's uh, Haiti uh, Jamaica uh, uh, you know right here uh, whatever area that they uh, decide to go in mm -hmm. they have it all around you can see in fact you can see up there now the pictures around the wall Mm -hmm. They always have something very, very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see the gentleman right there. Oh, yeah. That was Mr. Morrison. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morrison was the gentleman that came, that started this library. Okay. Yeah. And usually they have it on sometimes. You can see him moving his head and, and, okay. and, and, and talking. Very but it's, nice. Yes, when they, you know, do a tour in here, bring people. So, okay. And I'm just so uh, thankful uh, for this African American library mm -hmm. that has so much about our past. Absolutely. In fact, I am very grateful. I was reading, I used to come in and read a lot of the books as mm -hmm. being president of the Black History uh, Association. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and I read uh, a book about some of the uh, when they were selling uh, blights, mm -hmm. they had signs of Hebrews. They wanted Hebrews mm -hmm. uh, as they were buying slaves. They mm -hmm. wanted Hebrews because the Hebrews were better workers. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I said, wow, this is very interesting. Yes, it is. And uh, thank God we are people of dollars. Absolutely, absolutely. Well. I think that it's very fitting for you to select this location, an uh, iconic uh, facility for an icon, and also it's rich in information, and I would say that you fit that same description, so I don't think you could have chosen a better place to film this documentary. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes. And I want to thank all of you who are here today, um, many of you from other parts of the country, and I just want you to know I love you. <laughs> we love you too. <laughs>